man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, Darren? Hey, everyone. I'm Noah Lichtenstein from Crossover VC. Today, I'm joined by my good friend, Myers Leonard of the NBA's Miami Heat and one of the most prominent pro athletes in gaming today. And gaming industry legend, Darren Suh, a creator of the global gaming phenomenon, Fortnite. One of the top grossing games in history, generating over $5 billion in revenue. So Darren, Myers, I want to thank you guys so much for taking the time today. Thanks for having us, uh, number one, Noah. And Darren, I mean, we all have to know, where in the world did the idea for Fortnite come about? I always tell this story is, is that, you know, on, on Saturday afternoons, I get on my bike and I pedal down to the patch of wood uh, down the street. And we would literally take pieces of board, scraps, rusty nails, and actually make a fort. And it was really, well, how do we take that childlike moment of joy with all your friends and make that into a game? And it was really a fusion of, of a bunch of different folks, like thinking about what it was like back when they were kids making uh, uh, forts in the backyards. And that's really how the idea started. And obviously over time, you build different game mechanics to, to support all those pieces, different game modes. But in the end, it's really that, that moment that appeals to so many different people about, oh yeah, I remember what that was like, or that is my current world. You know, I play with my friends, but in this day and age, you get to do that digitally. That is so amazing. I mean, when I first jumped into Fortnite, I just thought there were so many different components to it that as a gamer, you know, I was, I grew up playing a lot of Call of Duty. And then some of my buddies were playing Fortnite, like, Myers, you got to try Fortnite. Myers, you got to try Fortnite. So I started to stream, and that's what everyone wanted me to play. So I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm making the jump to Fortnite. I got to try it out. And I have to admit, I was hooked immediately. Just, there's something about Fortnite that just kind of ropes you in, really. It's funny, when you talk to other NBA players about Fortnite, they're all talking about, well, my kids won't get off the dang game. But, you know, from, from a guy who, who loves gaming, you know, that it's so, so interactive. And as you mentioned, it's, it's amazing that you guys had the thought to kind of take yourselves back to your childhood and create something that not only you guys would enjoy, but also that people around the world were going to enjoy. Uh, on that note, did it ever surprise you that Fortnite and just gaming in general has reached this point where they almost act like social networks, where people are showing up at your game, not even to play, but to chat with friends or even watch concerts. I mean, what, 10 million people showed up to watch Marshmallow play? Oh like, uh, yeah, the numbers are staggering. Mind? About that? Yeah, for me, the I think that's just resonating the uh, the individual social groups of like what you like to do together. So this the platforms now um, provide that. But yeah, it is it is essential to to build those communities and have your friends play you know as quickly as possible together because you know we are social creatures you know and so the sky's the limit about where it's going to go in the future uh in terms of like it's only going to get more social and i think it's going to just continue to be part of what life is now uh, and that's awesome i'm curious when it comes to a game like fortnite where you've seen so much success where were the big turning points or is there like a you know, a, a massive team that's working on this and, and, and developing new ideas like every day, or how does that work? <laughs> I've uh, had passed the torch off to another group of people. They are diligently building stuff. And I, I have, you know, like you, I am very interested to see, you know, what they do in the future. In the past, it was, you know, I think the secret of what was built was really having a world that was expansive enough to in, to have all these different styles of gameplay uh, to, to coexist. It was really the construct of the world that we built that enabled now creators to keep building those games and those fantasies going forward. And and now as a guy who's 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 sort of stepped away from all this, I'm excited to see what the team and what the community continues to build with this world. That's the power of the online games with communities. They continue to evolve and you hear great ideas from the community and you you know put, put them back into the game. 
and then you know the building system that was really the thing that mm. like we knew was unique to this style of game and it was unique to the fantasy so that was the thing in the end how it took off is sort of a mystery to me to get to the success that it's at oh. but like but the core version of that is like hey the world is really friendly and welcoming to everybody uh i have to say darren uh I'm, I become a bit of a hermit also. Um, my wife often <laughs> makes fun of me. You know, I, we, we obviously spend our time together and then I, I have to work out a ton. But during my downtime, I, I, I just love gaming, you know? So I, it's nothing for me to play three, four, five. I mean, I did a 24 hour live stream. Um, yeah, uh, Mars, talk about ago. that for a second. Yeah, talk. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'd love to. I, I did do a 24 hour live stream. And for me, it's almost like a badge of honor that I feel I have now. And let me just tell you, 24 straight hours of like this hammer mentality of me coming out, not that easy, but I loved it. I loved every second of it. You know, we had giveaways and of course I played a ton of Call of Duty. I did actually jump over to Fortnite and uh, play with some phase guys. So it was a ton of fun. But uh, on the whole, we raised $70,000 in, in 24 hours, um, which was obviously a, a, an amazing, amazing thing. I have a goal to feed 1 million people in the month of April uh, due to this, the craziness of coronavirus and so many people are affected, right? So uh, last night I had another impactful stream. Uh, we raised another 60,000, so we're up to about 130,000 now. It was an all NBA uh, war zone solo event. So um, it's been a ton of fun. I think by the time this month is over, I'll, I'll probably be over a half a million in, in total donations that I was a, a part of. So it just feels good to know that something I'm so passionate about while everything else is on hold in our world. But yeah. one thing that is very real right now because of just the technology is gaming. But I do have a question. I, I, I'm very, very curious and, and I maybe, I, I think you probably have the answer. Did you envision like what it actually is like when Turner and Booga and all these, it, was that the vision that people would be able to crank 90s and edit and, or was it actually like, this is a fort based game where, well, we got this part of the map and you are not to come over here. I mean, it is, you have to admit, it's some of the stuff these guys could do, it, it's crazy. It blows my mind to be honest. So I'm curious about that. I'm, I'm very curious. Yeah. About that. I Absolutely. So two things. So, so first off, thank you for for being out there and 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 raising money and trying to help the people. I mean, this is a crazy time. Uh, so it really it makes me really happy when I when I see members of the of the community out there sort of working hard to, to help other other folks. So again, mm -hmm. let me just say thanks for for, for continuing to do that. So uh, as far as uh, building, so the weird part about it, and I, it was a traversal as a mechanic, like building as a, a, a way to like get up into the sky or to go over uh, uh, obstacles and to use that in your, in your gameplay it wow. emerged pretty early once we were, we were doing um, PVP based gameplay of any, any kind, whether it was capture the flag uh, or, or some of our, or our other prototype modes. And so, yeah, it was it it was evident, but I don't think we saw the level of um, skill that exists in the in the community today back then. But it, but we could see the emergent, and that emergent gameplay was the thing. We were like, hmm, this is going to be interesting when we pair this with these types of gameplays because humans versus humans playing these kind of games are going to do wild things that we never thought uh, uh, possible at, at that moment. But yeah, there was always a little spark of that building mode and that traversal of the game world that, that exists. It's amazing. And that's just, yeah, just blows, blows my mind. So shifting gears a little bit, when did you guys first see this intersection of sports and gaming really start to take place? And why do you think it's taken off in the way that it has? So when I grew up, um, I, you know, it was a bit different. Like people who played uh, games were a smaller subset of your average high school or middle school population. They were, you know, and they were a bit of the nerd folk and there was, you know, sports and gaming at that time didn't didn't really it, it, it coexist in the way that it does today so tell me a little bit about like what it's like today where the, where this crossover is like everybody's right at that at the forefront absolutely good word first of all crossover but secondly um <laughs> you know i was actually just on a panel the other day that talked about the modern day two sport athlete and 
during this panel, we talked about, well, now it's, you can be somewhat of a, of an athlete, an NBA athlete, NFL, whatever it may be, and play video games. It used to be, well, if you're a gamer, you're a nerd or you're weird or, you know, you're kind of eh, whatever. But now it's very trendy and very uh, much uh, a real thing that athletes have made this jump over to streaming and, and gaming. And it, it's fun to build a new community and fan base in this area. You know, we, we all have our fans that it's, it's interesting. You kind of have the fans that love you for the basketball player that you are. And now I have the fans that love me for the gamer that I am. And then you have some crossover between between the two each community finds a way to to impact the world through gaming so it's been uh very fun for me to be a part of this world and, and now be a trendsetter in, in this world you know in the in the in the way back we used to talk about like what's our contribution to the world we're we 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 don't cure cancer as as game developers like how do we do that but but interestingly enough like the communities that have grown from gaming do they have a real positive impact on the world and i've you know and i'm excited to see all those those pieces come together you know i'm hoping like one of the places i like to to um work with is a is a charity called teen cancer america you know teenagers are the seed of gamers and it's like well how do you help that group of people very directly so seeing everybody else out there yourself dr lupo getting out there and really raising money and just you know you guys are changing the world and i i'm very thankful for it all right so it's been an awesome awesome episode and at the end of every episode we like to do a section we call uh the rapid fire so you guys ready for it i'm ready sure am. you're stuck on an island you can only play one game for the rest of your life what game is it for me a game like dark souls call of duty modern warfare the one that's out right now where's your favorite starting point on fortnite map the Tilted Towers. Because that was literally the first place I ever dropped and I started, and I dropped there for probably two weeks straight, I'll go Haunted Hills. What's your quarantine cheat food? Ice cream and um, donuts. And, and a cronut to be exact, a glazed oh, yeah. cronut because shoot, we, unbelievable. A giant bag of Reese's Pieces. Like it's big. Oh, and those are so <laughs> good. What is one app on your phone that you just can't live without? I got a 1A and 1B. I'm sorry. I can't go rapid fire on this one. It's got to be Instagram and Twitch. For me, uh, you know, I sadly, it'll probably have to be my my Outlook mail app. I just like, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's sad, but it's like, that's how I keep myself organized, my task list, my ideas. Like, you just, I just throw everything in there. So when all this craziness is over, what's the one thing, the first thing that you want to do that you haven't been able to do when all this ends? I've got a like a hiking spot I like to go to. As soon as we're, the, we're 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 free, I'll be up on that mountain running around. So. And for me, I would have to probably say playing an NBA basketball game, in particular in the playoffs, because we've had a very successful season here in Miami. Uh, to get back out there on the floor and, and competing again would definitely be my answer. Thank you so much for taking the time. This has been amazing. Uh, I know you guys are both super busy, and thanks. Stay safe out there. Thanks again for stopping by the crossover. You can give our guests a follow here and here and check back with us soon for more founder stories. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube for live streaming sports and premium content. Subscribe to ESPN+.